Did you know that built right into Unreal is the option for you to create a decal, basic decal, with single texture and a single material, but then be able to swap between all sorts of decals that you have prepared? Well, this setup is actually really simple, so let me show you exactly what you get out of it and how to quickly set it up for yourself. So you don't need to create tons and tons of material instances for each version of your decals. If you take a look here, we have a bunch of decals here and some of them are colored because we have full color control as well. And if I get out of game mode, you can see, well, this is just a single decal. There's nothing special about it. There's no blueprints involved. There's nothing custom here, but yet we're able to customize exactly what we see and the color it is. And primarily it is thanks to a decal grid. Basically, this is just a simple five by five grid in this case, where we have created different decals that go in each one of these locations. And so I'm able to quickly swap between them. Now, don't worry, you don't have to have this specifically be a five by five. You could even have it be a four by 10. You don't have to keep this into a perfect square ratio if you don't need to. So the setup is super fast and easy. So let me show you exactly how it's done. I'm going to right click and grab ourselves a new material. There's going to be M underscore decal patterns. I'll go ahead and open it up. So here we are in the material editor. We need to get our texture in. So I'll go ahead and select our texture and just drag it right in so we have access to it in our material. The next thing we want to do is change the material settings themselves. So deselect the texture sample and here on the left side in the detail panel, change the material domain from surface to deferred decal and change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. At this point, if you wanted to, you could already plug in your RGB into your base color and your alpha into the opacity. And if I swap this over to a plane, you can see, well, we have all of the options. We don't want them. We wanna choose which one specifically we wanna get here. And we basically make use of the sprite animation nodes that are available to us, namely the flipbook. So if I search flipbook, I wanna grab the regular flipbook, and now I have options here. I'll go ahead and disconnect the texture sample from the original location, and we'll use this instead. Now this takes a texture 2D, not a texture sample. So I'll go ahead and right click on the texture sample and convert it to a texture object. And then I'll go ahead and plug that texture object into the texture. It is now asking for the number of rows and columns and we have a five by five. So I'll hold the one key, left click to get ourselves a constant and I'll type in five and I'll plug that into the number of rows and number of columns. And again, if you had a five by 10, you could absolutely plug that in yourself. You can of course also convert all of these to parameters. So that way you could quickly swap these out later and create instances of different grid systems that you created. So that way, if you wanted to have a two by 10 and a five by 10 for different scenarios, you could just create one master setup and then swap them out really easily. Now we need the animation phase. I'll press the one key to create ourselves a new constant and I'll plug that in for now to show you how this works. The result is our basically new base color. We can plug that into base color and our alpha goes into opacity. And if you take a look here, we have a single option here. If I change this to something like 0.1, we have a new option. All the cards, all 25 of them, are now between zero and one. Now, that means it'd be probably easier if we just selected it one through 25. So what we're gonna do is take this constant, detach it, and then drag out and search for a divide. And I wanna divide by the number of options. So I'll go ahead and divide by 25. And then I'll go ahead and plug this into the animation phase. And now we can swap this out, we'll say two, three, four. And you can see it swaps each one out. Now, this is great and all, but we have no way of controlling this. If I go ahead and create a material instance of this decal patterns, we can drag it into our level and then we'll align the red forward axis to be into the wall. So we'll rotate it 90 degrees. You can see we have access to it. Now in the detail panel here, you can see we have sort order. We have a bunch of options. We have decal size, decal color. Nothing does anything here. And we don't have custom primitive data that we can use here either because it's just a, it's just a decal. But this decal color, we can actually make use of. So back in our material, we're going to right click and search for decal color. And this gives us that actual input that we had there in the detail panel. So what we can use is use the alpha inside of this divide and then take the RGB and tint our decal with the color from our actual decal and plug that into our base color. So the RGB values will tint our decal, but the alpha will control which decal we will be using. So now in the detail panel, if I go ahead and open the decal color, I can go ahead and change the color to anything I'd like and it automatically updates. And if I want to, I in the alpha, instead of one, I can type in two, three, four, 
and basically pick whatever I'd like. And if I ever go higher than the option, it basically cycles through. So 26 would be the first option, for example. Now, one quick note, if you do have an odd number, I have found that for some reason, if you do five and four right now, will show the same thing. So I'll be between four and five here, and then the same. Just change five to five point something, like five point even oh one will do it and you'll get the new version. When I did this with a simple 4x4 grid, I didn't have to do this. It was just automatic. It all worked great, but it seems like I do have to do this with an odd number grid. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise, you now have the option of just dragging out this base material and then just selecting which one you want to show and then tinting it to whatever your heart's desire is. But the main thing is, if you don't need a tint control, if you're just using decals that are, you've set the colors on them, well, you now have a red, green, and blue channel to control whatever you'd like. Change the roughness, change the metallic nature of it. Whatever you'd like, you just have inputs that you can utilize to do whatever you need. So hopefully this has showed you guys a couple of ways of using this trick in your own projects to hopefully make your lives a little bit easier. And I want to give a big thank you to my Patreons that help support me and everything I do. It really means a lot. If you'd like to join our community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. And if you want to experience some more Unreal content, check out this video right here for some more Unreal goodness.